All right, there was a clip going around of RFK Jr. talking about abortion. It's about a 28-second clip, but I want to play the full context of what he says and why it's been so controversial. Then we'll get into a little bit of where the American people stand on the issue. Let's check it out. If in office. Um, can you clarify, and forgive me for using that word, again, it depends on what you've read, what we've heard over the last, let's just say, year. Your stance on abortion I is mean, what? I, I, I've been uh, probably one of the leading, arguably one of the leading um, people in this country for medical freedom and for bodily autonomy. Yeah. So, um, and I, you know, I think with abortion, every abortion is a tragedy. Um, many of them leave permanent trauma on the woman. Um, but I think ultimately, I don't trust government to have uh, jurisdiction over people's bodies. Mm -hmm. and I think we need to leave it to the woman, her pastor, and to um, you know her spiritual advisors or advise her physician, whatever, to make those decisions. I, I have to say this: that we have, I have a plan that we've published which is called more joys and fewer abortions. And, you know, that plan, uh, something like close to 60% of abortions are among women who make the decision for economic reasons. And I think we need to do everything we can to make sure that women who want to bring their babies to term and are scared of not being able to afford them, uh, that is never a consideration. There are, and there are so many. I love that. Uh, I mean, there's so many opportunities in Catholic charities. I mean, there's so many opportunities for women to make other choices. And sometimes it's just about them knowing and just about the education part of it. Do it's you also not, do, about, do, but you can know, I ask child about, care. Uh, and of, about. of course, but the finances always play. So he has a plan. He, he, he said every abortion is a tragedy. And he has a plan to give women options other than abortion to help them out which is good but and he doesn't but he doesn't believe that government should be involved in body autonomy but this is where the controversy begins a role in it and I, you try to have a heart and not judge from afar because no one understands what it's like when you're in those shoes should there be a a limit um or you're saying all the way up through full term, a woman has a right to have an abortion? Yeah, I mean, I don't think any woman ever, ever in history has said, I'm going to have a, you know, I'm going to have a baby. Um, I'm going to get pregnant and carry that baby to eight months of term, and then I'm going to terminate the pregnancy. I don't think anybody wants to do that. And that has happened. Too many times to count, though. Where would these? Uh, I'm sure it has happened. I would say in almost all those cases, there's extenuating circumstances. But who knows? But I mean, we especially when when there's drugs involved and people aren't thinking clearly. At the end of the day, it well, is happening. And what I'm saying is, I don't think any woman sets out as saying, "I'm going to carry a baby for eight months and abort him." Sure, but they could change their mind at eight months, and this is what we've exactly. seen. So and should I they be allowed to do it full term? Yeah. Oh, so again, I you know I respect people who I think there's a very very good argument, such a compelling argument, um, that the state has a interest in protecting a fully formed fetus. I absolutely think that that argument is very convincing. But again, I come down to the fact that I, I don't trust the state, and I think we need to trust the woman. And I don't think that that's a satisfactory outcome because there's always going to be instances where bad things happen. They're all, yes, we can't prevent Either that. Either way. There's going to be bad things. But so to happen. leave, so so in other words, keeping it as is with Roe versus Wade having been overturned and leaving it up to the states to determine if and when a woman can have an abortion. No, I wouldn't leave it to the states. You wouldn't right. No, I would. I, you would I, say completely. It's up you to know, the woman. My belief is the, we should leave it to the woman. We shouldn't have government involved. Even if it's full term. Even if it's full term. Okay, and I think that's where that's what I wanted to clarify because there, are especially uh, people in the middle, trying to determine which way we go, 
and some people are one one topic voters, correct? But with this issue in particular, it's a tough one, and I know there's no simple answer. And as a Catholic, that definitely is something that is a concern with many practicing Catholics that it would be okay to allow a woman to do that. I don't think it's term. ever okay. It would I be think, allowed. It would be allowed. I think we have to leave it to the woman rather than the okay. state. Okay. So, uh, I, know, I think we should do everything in our power to Education. make sure that never happens mm-hmm. and everything that we can do. And, uh, but I think ultimately, you know, nobody sets out to do that. And there are always some kind of extenuating circumstances that would make a mother make that kind of choice, a terrible, terrible choice, which is, you know, uh, you you can't overstate how bad that is. And I think, um, you know, ultimately we have to trust women. Mm -hmm. So of all of these issues, and there's so many. That's where the issue comes in, is when he says it should be allowed up to full term and sage still uh told him hey these things are happening and they are and i i get where he's coming from by saying nobody sets out to do these things nobody's going to get knocked up and then say all right eight months i'm going to abort it but she says they could change their mind and they can and i want to talk about where people stand on the issue and this is where I don't agree with RFK Jr. about not letting the government get involved, the states get involved with this and just leaving it completely up to the woman, even though it is terribly wrong to have a, an abortion at full term, or, you know, eight months, nine months, whatever, seven months, whatever it's going to be when the baby is almost fully grown, a fully grown fetus. Um, I think that, I think, I think, I, I don't agree with him right there. But uh, let's see where most abortions happen. If you take a look at this chart, only 1% of abortions happen after 21 weeks. 3% is between 16 to 20 weeks. But then look at this, 96% of abortions happen within with 15 weeks or less. So most people aren't doing it at this rate right here in the second and third trimester. Those are facts. And like I said, I understand where he's coming from. I I get the point of that it's terrible and do everything you can to prevent it. But one way you do prevent it is don't allow it to happen. I think it should be completely off limits at that stage. Now, let's take a look. Less than 1% of abortions take place in the third trimester Here's why people get them. So I want to talk about some of the reasons why people get these abortions in the third trimester. It says that terminating a pregnancy after 21 weeks is extremely rare, yet the myths about why people pursue abortions after 24 weeks when the third trimester begins are a dominant part of the debate over abortion. I want to use real stories to help overturn these myths. So one woman I interviewed, for example, explained that she needed an abortion following a diagnosis at 29 weeks of pregnancy because that her fetus, brain, fetus's brain was not developing because a great deal of fetal brain development happens after the 24th week. There, are no, there was no way to diagnose this problem earlier. So there's an example right there of, uh, of exceptions that people want. Even if you're pro-life, this, there are a lot of people that want exceptions like that with the... If the baby is in, in grave danger of being a, of dying uh, after birth, if there's some kind of brain development issue or some kind of major health issue and the baby won't make it, that's why some people want exceptions to abortion no matter where they stand on the issue. And most people don't want it in any time after that first trimester. Let's keep it going here. <clears throat> Another reason is sometimes the new information people learn is simply the fact that they are expecting that they're pregnant. For instance, I interviewed a woman with several chronic medical conditions. Her treatment caused many of the symptoms commonly associated with pregnancy. After years of an irregular menstrual period, regular weight fluctuations, chronic nausea, and at least uh, weekly vomiting, she did not recognize any symptoms until she was 26 weeks along. Her medical conditions made the continuing Pregnancy a risk, a health risk for her. Besides that, she never wanted to have a baby. So there's another example of 
getting new information. Um, she had several chronic conditions, and it was a health risk to her. There is another exception, health risk to the mother. There's another exception that people are okay with. Now, here's another situation. Other people are interviewed were delayed in getting care when they first want an abortion, illustrating the second pathway needing a third trimester abortion. Typically, these delays are caused by policies such as bans on public insurance coverage of abortion, which are legal under court rulings that followed Roe Ro v. Wade. Indeed, several women I spoke with have public insurance and lived in states that prohibited public insurance coverage of abortion, forcing them to pay out of pocket for abortion care. Additionally, financially struggling, they could not afford an abortion when they first wanted one. By the time they came up with enough money, they were in their third trimester. Other women described barriers that weren't directly related to policy. One young woman was so afraid that her parents would judge her for becoming pregnant and wanting an abortion that she took no action towards getting one. By the time she felt comfortable, to be, she was able to uh, confide in her brother who was able to get her an appointment for an abortion. She was in the third trimester. So there were, uh, I, I see, like, I don't, I don't think that's okay. I, I think, I don't think, you know, she just, she was afraid to tell her parents, but then there was nothing wrong with her, according to this article. Medically, she was just afraid to tell her parents, and she went to the third trimester and got one because of, you know, when she was able to tell her brother. I think at that point, you have to look at other options. Uh, adoption, there are plenty of other options. There are even those, those drop-offs. There's even some now in Texas and other states have them. I think Indiana has some where you can drop the baby off into a like a box, or not a box, but you know you you, you pull out it's like a drawer. I can't explain it to you, but it's hard to explain. But you put in, and you put the baby in there, and then the, it alerts somebody inside, and they come, they get care for the baby and find it a good home. I think that's a fantastic option, and we're seeing more of these boxes. Uh, pop up around the United States, and they're and they're they're starting to see some success with it, which is why there are more coming, and that's a good thing. Those are the options that you have: adoption, the taking to these these places, these facilities. Um, you know, if if you just don't want a child, but I think it is completely wrong to terminate it all the way near the end when it is about to come out and live a, its life. I think I think I think those are. I think these are the type of things where I agree with RFK on is you need to find, you do everything you can to prevent this from happening. You do everything you can to prevent these late term abortions happening, any abortion in general. You find other options for people who just don't want kids, who are scared, whatever it is, who are not ready, but they don't, you try to steer them away from having abortions. And you're not, you're not going to get every state to agree on one thing. Now, let's. Uh, I want to read this for you. This is from Newsweek. 80% of Americans think abortion should be illegal in third trimester. This is from 2021, but data has been roughly the same in recent uh, years. You know, not much has really changed uh, since then. Third trimester abortion should be illegal according to 80% of Americans, a new poll found from the Associated Press. The findings revealed most Americans, 61%, believe... Most or all abortions should be legal in the first trimester. <clears throat> no, uh, yeah, the first trimester. The second trimester that begins at 13, 65% of believe abortion should be illegal. The final trimester begins on the 28th week. Uh, yeah, so you see it goes down. As time goes on, uh, as, the, the, as, the, as the first trimester, its support for it is higher. The second, it drops down. Third, it, it drops even lower. So that is where most Americans stand. I'm not saying that I agree with that or not. I'm just saying this is where most people stand on the issue. And Donald Trump, yes, uh, I think that was a good thing about Roe v. Wade getting overturned. And, and one thing I don't agree with that, he said he was kind of contradictory in his statement when he when the Arizona thing happened with um, the ban on abortion or whatever it was in Arizona. And he was asked about it. You know, he said it should be left up to the states, but then he says 
he doesn't like what they did in Arizona, and hopefully it'll be overturned. I mean, it was a little contradictory in my opinion. Um, like, if, you, if you're going to leave it up to the states, leave it up to the states and leave it at that. Let them make their own decisions. But then he criticized DeSantis for what he said. I get he's trying to find some middle ground on, on both sides of the aisle, but you have to be consistent on that issue. And DeSantis has been, you be, DeSantis has been very consistent from day one. That is, he stands, he just pro-life, period. He's not afraid to say it. Um, he's not playing both sides. He's just a straight shooter when it comes to that topic. And that's what I do appreciate him with that, even though I'm a Trump guy. But um, DeSantis is very consistent in, on the side of life, no matter what. I think he would sign if there was a national ban of within of six weeks. I think he would easily say, yeah, I would sign it. You know, but I think in, in Donald Trump is, has, been, has shown – he is. He stands with life. He's the first president to to show up at the the um, the March for Life, I believe it was. Um, he put in pro life judges in place. He you have to be consistent on that. And this is a touchy subject, very touchy subject, and it's it can we have one side of the aisle who is that's all they care about. You see the left, the Democrats. They're it's like the number one issue is abortion. When everybody else is thinking about inflation and illegal immigration, but Democrats, they don't care what happens. It seems like, as long as they have they have the option to have an abortion, <laughs> which I think is crazy. Uh, but there are other options out there. You can have your tubes tied. You can have a vasectomy if you just don't want to have kids in general. There is adoption. There are other things you can do. You can go talk to people to to get you through this and see what pathway is best for you and, and to avoid the abortion. So I agree with RFK there that he, you can do everything possible, try to do everything possible to give women the resources to avoid having abortion. But I don't agree with him on saying that it should be their decision all the way up to full term. That's where I think you need government in certain those cases, because you see it in, in uh, places like France and European, other European countries, they ban it after 12, 15 weeks. So even, they're not even really radical on that issue. They don't even allow it after a certain point. But yeah, it's a, it's a touchy subject. It's tough, and I don't think you're going to have uh, one, every state, you're never going to have every state agree on the issue. But what you can do is for the pro-life movement is do work in those states to have more of a pro-life stance. Here in Texas, we have the six-week thing. In Florida, you see in other states going to eight weeks or 12 weeks. And then you have other states that are more liberal on the issue. But if you're pro-life in those states, then it's going to be up to you to do work where you live and bring your agenda to the forefront, which is where I agree with Trump on. When Trump says uh, you have to win first, to get you have to win elections first. And I get that. You have to win elections in order to pass to get your agenda passed so if what he is saying what others say is if if the middle ground is is where most people stand is that 12 to 15 week range start there and move the needle in your direction start there and then make some headway on bringing that down to six weeks whatever it's gonna whatever you want do i think there'll ever be a national ban no but if there's a middle ground where people can agree on and then you start putting your work in to push your agenda for a pro, more pro-life stance to get it under that 15 weeks, then I think that's where you should go. That's just my opinion on that. Um, but no, if it, uh, after this, see, we see this right here, 90, 96% don't, uh, don't even happen in, 96% happen in that first trimester. So most Americans, I think, would would want some kind of restriction on abortions. They, they want some kind of restrictions on it. They don't want to add in the after that. A lot of them don't want it after that first trimester. So that's where I think RFK Jr. Uh, hurts himself by saying that it should be left up to the woman completely. And I get that. You don't want government involved with vaccines and all that. I don't. But I think when it comes to something like this one is life, I think there should be some limits on that. But all right, guys, thanks for listening. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Take care.